Hey guys, even here, and we are 7 weeks out of Arnold Classic, and we got a couple of very interesting bodybuilding updates. For example, this one, as you can see, we are starting with a physique update of Horse MD, Marcelo D'Angelis, and in this photo, hell, he looks really freaking crazy. Like, this physique, I don't know, man, this wheat taper, this shape, this is just wow. Like, before, before he did his pro debut, we were all like, is it Photoshop, is it the lighting, is it the angle, is he only an Instagram bodybuilder, how good does he actually look next to the other top pros, and once we saw that at Romania Pro, he basically proved to us that he is a legit bodybuilder, that he is actually one of the top pros in the world right now. And he is prepping for the Arnold Classic in 7 weeks, and this is what he looks like right now, and I gotta say, this looks really phenomenal. The first thing that pops to my eyes on this physique is his legs. Like, his legs are insane. I mean, look at that lateral head, that outer sweep. How much is it popping? Like, this is insane. Like, who has this kind of a sweep on their legs today? I mean, I don't know. Like, Hardy has really thick legs. Samson has massive legs. But is anybody having this much of a pop? Yeah, sure, Rubio, Nexilla has really massive legs, bigger than these, but is his waist this small? Is it this ratio? I don't think so. That's the second thing that I noticed on this physique, super tiny small waist, combined with massive legs. And as far as legs, it's not just the outer sweep, but also the adductors are really big, the symmetry is amazing, the calves are also on point, and then, on top of it all, the waist is super tiny and the shoulders are wide. This is crazy, like, this axe taper is really phenomenal. And now that we know that he's not only an Instagram bodybuilder, and now that he grew a lot of muscle, now that he can match those top guys like Samson, for example, right? I mean, he beat Nathan Diasha and he almost beat Bakrus Tabani, if you ask me. Now that we know that he is massive enough, and when we see a photo like this, it just makes it that much more impressive. So with this kind of structure, with this kind of shape, with this axe taper, we taper, and with all this muscle, and I'm sure his conditioning is gonna get much, much better in the next 7 weeks. I mean, where can this guy place? I don't think he can still beat Samson or Hari Japan, or even Andrew Jack, I don't think so, but maybe, maybe he can battle for that top 4, top 5, Eddie Arnold, maybe like he can beat Rubio, maybe even Rafael Brandau, maybe James Hollingshead, I don't know, I don't know yet, personally right now I have Rubio and Rafael Brandau in that top 5, but maybe this guy surprises, you know, we never saw him against Rubio, for example, even though he was supposed to compete at uh, Prague Pro, he pulled out because he was sick, I believe. So I never saw that matchup. That would be really interesting because those physiques are completely different. And, you know, he's training with Rafael Brandau. They are both from Brazil. They're training together right now. And as you guys know, Rafael Brandau wasn't at Romania Pro, which was the only show that Horse MD ever did. So we don't know what that is going to look like. But personally, from what I'm seeing, based on this crazy, crazy shape and structure, and based on his conditioning from Romania Pro, and also based on the progress that he made from turning pro to his pro debut, I am expecting something insane from this guy at the Arnold Classic. What do you guys think? Where will he place? Like I said, Samson Dauda is sitting very firmly at the very top of the Arnold Classic. I mean, he won it last year, he's defending his title this year. This right here is a top tier bodybuilder and today we got three of those. We got Samson, Derek and Hadi and that's it. Because you had a three man call out, that's your top tier. And I think the difference, the gap between those three guys and everybody else is pretty visible. There is a pretty big gap between Samson and Brandon Curry. There was no chance of Brandon Curry beating Samson Dauda. There was no, no chance. Those four guys, Brandon Curry, Michal Krizo, 
Andrew Jack and Hunter Labrada were battling for that fort. And as far as the top three, those three guys, Samson Hardy and Derek, are very firmly the top tier of today's open bodybuilding. Maybe throughout this year, somebody else is going to make big improvements and we're going to have four guys in the top tier. But right now, there are only three of them. And this is one of those guys, Samson Dauda, who just posted a physique update. And first of all, if you were worried about what he's going to look like after that hamstring injury, he had a slight hamstring tear. You don't have to worry anymore because as you can see he looks phenomenal, like he looks really dry, really conditioned, his conditioning is looking really good for 7 weeks out, he is ready early, he's gonna be ready early for sure and maybe, probably, I believe, this seems like, this is shaping up to be Samson's best conditioning yet. And Milo Sharchev said so himself, he said the judges literally told them we need better conditioning, so now they're working on improving the conditioning. So far, it wasn't that big of an issue, he was always big, he was round, he was massive, and it was good, he got up to be top 3 at the Mr. Olympia and first at the Arnold Classic, but now they're saying they need better conditioning, so they're working on it. As you can see, Samson, I don't think he ever looked this shredded at 7 weeks out of any show. I mean, yeah, the photo is edited a little, it's sharpened up for sure, but, you know, he's not that conditioned, but he's still, you can see, very, very conditioned. And also, I gotta say, I don't think his front double bicep ever looked this good. It's really flowing nicely. What I didn't like about his front double were two things lats weren't popping out enough they were kind of small which is basically his his weakest body part his lats are high inserted and they're not really the most massive lats but he improved that for sure and they're flowing quite nicely in this front double right here and also his arms were kind of flat when he does the front double bicep pose like the biceps weren't exactly super peaky and the tricep weren't really hanging super low but he improved that as well obviously like here you can see everything is flowing quite nicely this is the best front double bicep from samson dauda ever and in the caption here he says let's switch it up so now he's gonna start dieting harder which means he got to this condition without really trying hard which makes sense because as you guys know, he continued competing after the Mr. Olympia, he maintained good conditioning, he didn't have any time off, you know, he didn't have a health phase, he's obviously still on gear, he stayed on gear, and during this time of competing, his metabolism was probably super, super high, and he couldn't gain fat, no matter how much he ate, and I'm sure he ate a lot during the holidays, and he is known for having that uh, pizza every weekend, so I'm sure he got to this point pretty easily, and now he's gonna switch things up, now he's gonna start dieting harder, so yeah, I'm telling you, at the Arnold Classic, we're gonna witness the best Samson Dowd of all time, he is gonna be massive, and he's gonna be more conditioned than we ever saw him. Is that gonna be enough to beat Hari Japan? Well, what he brought last year was enough to beat Nick Walker, who is, I think, on a similar level as Hari Japan. so... I don't think, I don't see why he can't beat Hari. I believe he will. I believe this year at the Arnold Classic, Hari is gonna lose, Samson is gonna win, Samson is gonna prove to be better than Hari, and then there's gonna be only Derek left at the Mr. Olympia, and he's gonna beat him as well. That's my prediction for 2024. You guys tell me if you think I'm wrong, or if you agree. As I mentioned, Nick Walker, he also posted a physique update of his worst pose so this is this is definitely a bad pose for him and even here he does look bad like that, that, that's just the way i gotta put it like comparing this to horse md or samson dauda in the front double like no this is definitely not on the same level this is definitely uh, nick's worst pose as he says in the caption here so he says the only shot i personally believe that has held me back the only shot I always got beat in. The only shot I care about making better. And I think it is pretty obvious that this pose is, in fact, his worst pose. 
His back last spread also isn't very good, but he's at least showing crazy development and conditioning in the lower body from behind. Absent eyes also maybe not his best pose. He doesn't have the best Wii taper in it, but at least he has really thick, really developed abs, and he knows how to hit that pose. This one, he's really struggling with it. So this pose is kind of exposing Nick Walker, because... For this pose, you need to have a good Wii taper, you need to have good sweepy legs, and those are the two things he doesn't have. He doesn't have the best Wii taper because of his thick waist, and his quads aren't his strongest point. He improved them, but they are still not that great. Now, as far as the way he's doing this pose, the way he's hitting it, I could criticize it, I could say maybe it would look better if his feet were closer, maybe it would look better if he pulled his hips backwards or if he tilted his upper body towards the camera, you know, to the front. Maybe it would look better if he pushed his elbows a little bit more to the front, maybe lifted or lowered his fists up and down. I would like to see a couple of different variations, maybe it could be improved with posing, but like I said, I could say all that, and I did say all that, but what I'm trying to say is, he probably tried all these variations, he probably practiced his posing in a million different ways, and he figured out that this is the best he can do. I'm pretty sure about that, I'm pretty sure it's completely pointless to give such suggestions, I'm only pointing it out because it's probably what you guys are thinking as well, but we all know, I mean, he has a team around him, he probably tried all variations, if he didn't, then I mean he should, but I'm pretty sure he did, and this is the best that he got, it's not very good, it's definitely his worst pose, uh, is it improving? Well, here's a comparison from 2021 and now, in 2024, and, you know, his posing is definitely better, he's opening up his chest more, he's showing more lats, he's controlling his midsection better, his legs don't seem that much improved, but I think they, they're probably down in size because of his hamstring injury, and I'm sure until the Mr. Olympia they're gonna be bigger, so overall I would have to say the pose does look better, how much did it improve from last year, well it's only one year, how much can you expect, but from 2021 where he was fifth at the Mr. Olympia where he won the Arnold Classic, it's improved, it's definitely better, and I am sure it's gonna keep improving until one day, maybe, potentially, Nick becomes the best bodybuilder in the world it's not impossible, whatever you guys think, tell me down below in the comment section, if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, for more videos like this guys, please subscribe to this channel, thank you so much for watching, see you soon, all the best and bye bye.